students and learners, welcome to Henry's class, a channel where we bring learning to your doorsteps. Today we are much excited to hit your screens with exciting lessons. In fact, it's been a while we posted videos, but by God's grace, and the Lord has been good on our side, and then today we come your way with a very interesting lesson in mathematics. Today we'll pick mathematics for the GHS department. And then we are going to look at a topic called surface area and volume of solid figures. I will urge you, if you not subscribe, do so to subscribe. Yes, do so to subscribe. Share our videos to your friends, friends that are in GHS. But what we are doing is we want to help our BC students. We know they are the last bar to write BC. We want them to pass and pass well. So this channel is dedicated to assist our students. Yes. So do want to subscribe, hit the notification button. If there's any new video, get the chance of being the first viewer or the first learner to have access to it. Without any wasting my time, we would like to get going. We're going to look at surface area and volume of solid figures. I believe you have your things set. Now let's get going. So when we say solid figures, the word solid figures. What is the meaning of solid figures? When you see solid figures or a solid figure, a solid figure is any three dimensional geometrical shape. Any three D or three dimensional geometrical shape with a measurable length, width, and height. So basically, when we talk of a solid figure, it is a 3D shape, it has three dimensions. What are these three dimensions? We have the length, we have the width or the breadth, and then we have the height. So when we see solid figures, any 3D shape or three-dimensional shape with the length, with the width, or with the height. That is what we term as a solid figure. Now what are examples of solid figure? A cylinder is an example of a solid figure. Then we have Cuboid is an example of a solid figure. We have what we call um, the prism, so the triangular prism, or the is so basically we have the triangular prism. Those are what we call the pyramid. The pyramid. We have cone. Cone is a 3D shape. And then we have what we call cylinder. Cylinder is also part. We have what we call a sphere. A sphere. And we also have what we call the torus. And someone asked, what is the torus? I hope you know a donut. Yes, a donut or a ring. A ring shape or a donut shape. The name of that shape is called a torus. That is T O R U S. A torus. A torus. So basically, these are some few examples of 3D shapes. I think I have hit it on the screen. What is solid? I know, as soon as I said cylinder, you've had an idea, you've pictured something, you've turned your mind to the cylinder you have in the house. Yes, it's a good example of a cylinder. I know, as soon as I said cylinder, you will turn to see your bottle, could be your water bottle or any mineral water bottle or container. You tend to look at it. It is also an example of a cylinder. I know you tend to look at the malt you are drinking whilst whilst you are you are enjoying our lesson. I believe, I believe, yes. So that is also an example of a cylindrical shape or what you term as a cylinder. So basically, when we see a cylinder, what is a cylinder? What is a cylinder? Now, a cylinder is any prism, a prism with a circular cross section. A cylinder is a prism with a circular cross section. So any prism. In the first place, when we say a prism, what is a prism? And so what's the meaning of a circular cross section? Now when we say a prism, when we say a prism, a prism is any shape or any 3D shape that has a that has a cross section. A cross section. Now let me draw a prism for you to, to get the thing clear. Now take your mind to your open sheet. How it looks like. It is a prism. 
So let me draw one on the board, a triangular phrasing, of course. So, Basically, what I've done is a triangular prism. Now, when we say the cross section of a prism, when we say a prism, any 3D shape with a cross section. Now, why are we saying cylinder is a prism? One, this prism is described by what we call a cross section. Now, what is the cross section? When we say a cross section, it is the shape, hmm? the shape obtained by the intersection of a solid figure. A shape that is obtained by the intersection of a solid figure. So, looking at this shape, mm -hmm. there are two shapes that are intersecting to give me a prism. And what are these shapes? The triangular shapes. So, let's assume the triangular shapes are not there. Then, basically, we have what we call a rectangle. But as soon as I introduce my triangles, as soon as I introduce my triangles, then I have my prism, and this looks like the Luffy sheet. I don't know if you can see it clearly. Yes. So basically, when I say a cylinder, there is a prism. Why is it a prism? It has a cross section. So this and this together give you the cross section. So now I'm see what is the cross section of a prism, it is a triangular cross section. Then what is the cross section of a cylinder? A circular cross section. So let me draw a cylinder for you to get the understanding and then I'll explain the cross section of this for you. So I have my cylinder here. I'm doing a, just a sketch. So this is my cylinder. This is my cylinder. Now what are the circular cross section of the cylinder? This side and this side is what I mean by the circular cross section. Without these circles, without them, I have a rectangle. Without them, I have a rectangle. A rectangle. As soon as I introduce my circles, that is where I get my cylinder. So basically, when we say cylinder, any prism with a circular cross section. I believe you are okay. So can we continue now? If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Just put them in the comment section box. Sehem will address all of these questions for you with the appropriate answers you need. We are going to consider these two things. One. We are going to consider what we call the height and the base radius of a cylinder. So, let me do this again. So, I'm going to consider the height and the base radius of the cylinder. Now, when we say talk of the height, the standing, the standing portion, mm. yes, or the standing length, the height. So this is my height. You see, so the height of the cylinder. So this portion, so this portion gives me the height h, height by symbol h. Now, when we talk of base radius, what is the base radius? The base radius is talking about the radius that is gotten or obtained from the circular cross section. R, radius. How do you get radius? Radius is gotten by dividing diameter into two. Into two. So you divide diameter into two and you get your R. So base radius. So basically, we are talking of a line from the center 
touch any part of this circle and release. Release out. So we call this the phase radius. So we'll consider this. Now we are going to consider the following things under the cylinder. Now the meaning of curved surface area. We are talking of the curved portion of the cylinder. The curved portion of the cylinder. So when we talk of curved surface area, this portion is what we are talking about. The curved portion of it. Now how do you find the curved surface area of a cylinder? Consider what I have here. I should ask you the curved area of this portion. I'll call this side A. Call this side B. So looking at this, this side is my curved part. This side is curved. Good. Curved. In the form of circle, it is curved. Yes. So since this side is curved, this side is curved, I call it my curved surface area. How do I find this? Now when I open this same piece, so take note of this same piece. When I open it up for this portion, I'm going to open it up. You see this portion. You see? Good. So this is a circle, a circular shape, right? So how do you find the circumference? Circumference of a circle. It is given by 2 pi r. So 2 pi r. I am not done. Then, since this is a cylinder, or yes, a cylindrical shape, it has what we call the height. The height of it. So if I want to find the case of this area, the circular portion, what is the, 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 the circumference of it, times the height gives me the curve surface area. Gives me the curve surface area. So basically, here is it the two circles, you see, and this portion, this portion, this portion. So that, that was the circular part. When I open this one of this, the length of it, good. So the length of how many length? Two lengths. So this side is pi r pi r. This side is your height. Good. So how do you find the curves of this area? Add the two um the two curve sides together, multiplied by the height. So I add each to it. So how do you find the curves of this area? Two pi r each. How do you find the curves of this area? 2 pi r h. So if you are good, can we continue? Okay, the next one, let's talk about the total surface area now. Total surface area. Total surface area simply means area of circle A, circle B, and C added together. So my two circles, area of circle A, a or B, and then next a rectangle added together give me the total surface area. So, what the area of this circle? Of this circle is pi r. Another circle plus pi r. That is not all. This is for the two circles. It's not the rectangle, so I add the total, so you add. So how do you find the area of the here? I'm going to find area. It is a cylinder. Good. So first we talk about the curved surface area. So you are going to paint the curved surface area and add to the area of the two circles. So plus two pi r each. So how do you find the total surface area? Given by two pi r squared plus 2 pi r each. Basically, you can write this in another way. Those who know factorization. I will get that on the screen very soon. 2, 2 is the common factor. I count out. Pi is here, pi is here. Close count. R, R is here. I factorize R. So I'm left with only R plus 
pi factorized r factorized r each. So this is the formula based on you can also write it this way. It is also accepted. Any form you choose to answer the question in, you're going to get your answer. Now what do you mean of this? When we say a hollow cylinder, cylinder that is empty has no circular part or the circles are not there. So listen at what I have here, it is a hollow cylinder. This is a hollow cylinder. This T row is a hollow cylinder. Why? The circles are not there. But as soon as I introduce my circle, then I have a closed one. But when it looks this way, without the circle, it is open. So they are trying to talk of what if the cylinder has one portion having the circle, the other portion not having the circle. Now you want to draw that, it also goes this way. Something like this. Closed. Open. Yet again. With a circle, without a circle. That is all this based like this one is much good something like this one end open the other end closed so looking at this one circle is available the other circle is not available so how do I find the total surface area hollow cylinder with one area open first I pick the area of the one circle that has been introduced that is the pi as the area of it plus a curved surface area Two pi r pitch. First, take the area of one of the circles included and the curve surface area. It is total surface area of a closed cylinder. So with this one, you can see total surface area of a closed cylinder. Closed cylinder, or some of say solid cylinder. Solid cylinder is also accepted basically. Mm -hmm. So, in here, two sides closed meaning phase one a cylinder with two sides closed, meaning the two circles are introduced. But a cylinder with one end open, one end open simply means that only one circle is, is included, the other circle is not included. So, looking at this, only one circle, the other circle is not included. So, how can I also say this? One end closed. The other end open. So it is find the total surface area of the hollow cylinder with one end open or one end closed. This is your formula. So one end open or closed. This is your formula. Pi r square plus two pi r h. Let's then go. The next one we are going to talk about. The next one to be discussed is the. Um, Volume of a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder. So how do you find the volume of a cylinder? Because this topic is talking about the total surface area and volume. So now that we know the total surface area, how do we find the volume? Basically, this is my cylinder. Volume is given by base times your height. Mostly your volume includes your base includes your base. Good. So if you want to find the volume, basically it is the base times height. Now, here, what is the base of this shape? It is a circle. The base is a circle. Good. So, the height is also included. So it is base times height. So, are you seeing the pen? So the base of this circle, and that will be 2 pi R, the base of it, the perimeter, the circumference, and the curved surface area, right? The curved surface area of it, right? Good. So, sorry, 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 very sorry, very sorry. Circle, it is a circle, the area of it, sorry, the area of it, that is pi R squared. Then what else? The height of it, so you find the h. That's so pi r square h. So how do you find the volume of a cylinder? So it is equal to pi r square h. 
Now, how do we also find this? When we ask you, find the total surface area of a cylinder with both ends open. Let me test you this. Both ends open. So I explained something. Both ends open simply means that the two circles are not there. Both circles, both ends open means the two circles are not there. So if I want to draw both ends, means this is what I will draw. Something like this. Or yes, something like this. Or something like this. Both ends open. Why the circle is not there? Both ends open. So with this, I think the thing, no circles included. So what do you pick? Just pick the curve surface area. So total surface area of hollow cylinder. With both ends open, and that will be equal to 2 pi r h because basically the two circles are not there. Now we are going to shift our attention to another part the pipe. The pipe, all right. So you can take some water, take a short break. A deep breath and then we'll come back from the short break and let us continue so as i said we're going to shift our attention now to the pipe the pipe good so we are going to consider the pipe consider the pipe now the pipe has what we call the anus the anus this portion is what we call the anus or someone will say the annular cross section. The anus or the annular cross section. Why is it annulus or annular cross section? It is annulus or annular cross section because there are two circles, basically two circles, what we call the concentric circles two circles with one center we call it a concentric circle look at my toilet row circle one and circle two they all have a common center good so the same sector that share a common center but i can see they can have different diameters right since this one is smaller it's going to have a small diameter this one is bigger it's going to have a bigger diameter you see good so angle when we say angles angles is the region enclosed by two concentric circles the region that is enclosed by two concentric circles angles so with the pipe you're going to see the angles of it so the inner circle the outer circle so let me draw this for you to get it Mm -hmm. Good. So if I have this, good. A pipe. Two concentric circles. Two circles with one center. Now from this portion to this portion, we give you R a small radius. From the same center to the bigger circle, it's a capital R. Because the radius or the radii are not the same. Radius of small circle is different from the bigger one. Look at the small circle and the big circle. They are not the same. Basically, they are not the same. Right? Good. So, from this center to touch the small circle, small R, small radius. From the same center to touch the bigger circle, it's capital R. The large radius or the outside radius. So here, where R is the inside radius, inside radius. Capital R is your outside radius, or you say the inner 
radius or the interior radius and the exterior or the outer radius. And this side is your height. Don't forget your height. So what can we consider as a pipe? One. Let's look at the cross section area of the pipe. Cross section. Cross section. Cross section. Cross section of how do you find the cross section of the pipe? Cross section of pipe simply means the, the cross section, the circles, right? So how do you find the area of these two? We have a small circle and a bigger one. So basically the small one is in the big one. Find the area of the big circle, find the area of the smaller, subtract it from the, the, the bigger one. So that would be pi, how do you find the area of the circle? Pi, why is it after? Because we want to subtract the area of the small from the bigger one, and the radius is capital R. So that would be pi r squared minus pi small r squared. This is how we find the cross section of the pi, cross section area of the pi. Pi capital R squared minus pi small r squared. You can also use difference of two squared, factorization of difference of two squared. So pi is here, pi factorized out, uh, capital R minus small r left. Now this can be written as difference of two squares, I believe you remember. R them in one bracket, subtract them in the other bracket. What else? We can also be asked to find the volume of the material used in making the pi. The volume of material used in making the pi. Now, the volume of the material. We can have what we call a copper pipe. Copper filled pipe. So this the material that could be used could be a, could be copper. So you can use it to find the volume of that material used in making the pipe. How do you find volume? Pi R square each. But with this one, you have two circles. So what do you do? Area of small minus area of big. With the height because it's volume, right? Or pi r square each volume of bigger minus volume of smaller. So the volume of material used in making the pi that's given by. Pi r squared minus pi small r squared. Multiply by the height. For someone who will see pi r squared each minus pi r squared each. This is what I said. I write this in a different way. Pi is here, pi is here, pi times out. It's multiplying with the h. So I have r squared minus r squared. It's the same as pi h brackets r plus r i. You need to take your time. So this one we're talking about the cross section of the pipe, the circular portions. How to find its area? So we have a bigger radius and smaller radius. So I'll just small from big. See, the volume of the material is could be copper. Can ask you the question. The volume of the copper is making the pipe. How do you find the volume of it? So pi r squared, capital r squared minus pi small r squared. Time to height gives you the volume of the copper or the material used in making the pipe. Someone can also choose to write pi capital R squared H for the volume. You see, pi R squared capital H minus pi small R squared H. But this H is outside to mean that H multiplied by this, H multiplied by that. So factorization. Factorization simply means a way of writing tall numbers in a small way. So what is found here and found here, you take it out of the brackets. We call it factorize it out. So pi comes out, I have r squared minus r squared left. Now this topic is in algebraic expressions and a factorization known as difference of two squares. When you have this, it simply means add the same things in one bracket, then subtract them in the next bracket to get your answer. Now, the last thing to discuss here, I'm going to look at volume of water 
the pipe and the volume of water, the pipe can hold. So this pipe, what volume of water can it hold? Basically, if I want to allow water to move through this, and I close this side, I close it, you see, I open it. So who can tell me then? Me. I believe you can put it in the comment section box. What cylinder? A hollow cylinder with both ends open. A hollow cylinder with both ends open. And when I close one side, a hollow cylinder with one end open or one end closed. See? Good. So, if I allow water to move through this, what is the volume of the water that passes through this? So the water starts from this portion and then goes down. So the water will start from this portion and fill it to the other side. So it's basically the whole of this thing containing the water. So it's just like the volume of the cylinder or of this pipe. That is pi r squared h. So volume of water a cylinder can hold or a pipe can hold and volume of a cylinder or a pipe are the same thing that is pi r squared h the area of one of the circle times your height your height sorry your base area of the base times height are you good so you are now going to solve questions on what we've done with the formula. We're going to apply them in some worked examples and some real life questions, and then we get much understanding of it. Hello, learners. Welcome back. We are now going to answer some worked examples or some questions in order to get much understanding of the formulas that we've written. So let's start number one. A cylindrical turn with one end open has diameter 140 millimeters and height 50 millimeters. Calculate the AI area of the base. II curve surface area. III total surface area. I volume of the tin. So it says a cylindrical tin, a tin that is of the shape of a cylinder has one end open one end open one end open the other end closed good now this cylindrical tin or this tin the diameter is 144 millimeters and the height is one sorry 50 meters so let's find the area of the base now consider the the base of a cylinder what shape base of the cylinder there is always what a circle so they are basically asking us to find the area of a circle so r area of the base is equal to pi r squared of the base the base is a circle yes now pi in the question is given by so when Pi is given by 22 over 7. Your radius. Now, there is diameter given. I said something. Radius is obtained by dividing diameter into 2. So we divide 140 into 2. And we get 70 millimeters for the radius. So the radius is 70 millimeters. Now that you have everything, just substitute everything into your formula. So pi is 22 over 7 your r radius 70 millimeters so square 70 square it's the same as 22 over 7 times 70 times 70 7 is this of 1 into 70 is 10 now 22 times 10 is going to give you 220 multiplied by 70 now this is going to give you 15,400 millimeters square. We have two zeros. 22 times 7 is 7. The curve surface area. Can you collect 
the formula to find the curves of this area. Good. That is the length of the rectangle times what? The height. The length of 2. Pi r, pi r. So that will be 2 pi r times your height. That is h. So curve the surface area. C and C is 2 pi r h. So let's start it where your h is given to be 50 millimeters. 50 millimeters. So let's substitute 2 times 5 that's 22 by 7. Your R is 70. Your height is 50. 7 into this 10 times. 2 times 22 is 44. And 10 times 50 is giving you 500. Now I, I, I. I, I, I says to find area of the exterior curve area. Sorry, 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 sorry. This is the second question. I, 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 total surface area. Now define total surface area. Now listen to the question. Total surface area. Uh -huh. The cylinder has one end open. So meaning only one circle is present. So you can't use 2 pi r squared. No. Because one circle is taken out. So to the left is what? Pi r squared. So that would be pi r squared. Area of one circle plus the curve 2 pi r each. Now pi 22 over 7. Your radius 70 squared. So 70 times 70 in one bracket. Plus your curve 2 times 22 over 7. The radius is 70, the height is 50. 37,400 millimeters squared. The last one, I. Volume of the 10. How do you find volume of the 10? Pi r squared each, or volume of the cylinder. Pi is 22 by 7. Radius is 70 squared, so 70 times 7. And the height is 50. Now, if you're able to solve the whole of this, the volume will be given by 770,000 meters cubed. We want to change this into centimeter. Into centimeter. We want to change millimeter cubed to centimeter. We divide by 1,000. So in centimeter, it's going to be 770. Centimeter cube. By millimeters, 770,000 millimeters cube. But the question about two is to leave it in centimeters. So we leave a question in millimeter cube. You can also write the centimeter cube for a bit. No problem. So our final answer 770,000 millimeters cube. Good? Sure. So that is it. That is it. Now I'm going to look at the next question. The next question. So I believe we've applied the formulas and then we are good. Yes. So Harry's class, learning brought to your doorsteps. Man who basically thinks it helps. Just have it here and then that is all. Good. And your teacher is here, your humble teacher is here to take you through all that you need to know. So we are going to look at the next example we are going to solve it we are going to solve it good so go through go through go through welcome back we are going to continue with the next example now what do we have the copper pie below is a hollow cylinder can someone tell me why it's hollow in the comment section box because one end is closed, the other end is open. Or one end has the circular portion, the other end is not having the circular portion or the circle. Good. So, it's a hollow cylinder with one end open. Now, I say we should find the volume of the pipe. I say we should find the volume. And volume is given by pi r squared h. 
where our pi is given by 22 over 7. Sorry. Our radius. Now, we have two radii, as I explained earlier on, with a pipe, two concentric circles. Now, from this center, you touch the small circle, it's one radius. From this same center to touch the big circle, it's also another radius. So the, red, the radii are not the same. They are not the same. So the small r, this one, in the, to the small circle, the small r. To the big one, this is the big r. So the small r, its diameter is 14. From this portion, this portion to that portion is 14. So if you want from the middle to only this portion, or from this side to this side, you just divide it by 2. So small r is 14 over 2. And now it is 7, 8 meters. Big R, I believe you can tell me what the big R, it's radar, sorry, it's radius is. That will be 18 over 2. And that will be 9 millimeters. So let's fix this into our formula. Pi 22 over 7. R, this one is not the big one, the small one. So that will be 7 square or 7 times 7. And your height given in the question. Okay, and our height is 1 meter. Now our height is 1 meter, but we need to change our height because whatever we are solving here is given in millimeters, millimeters, but the height stands out to be odd. So we make it, or we convert the meter to millimeters. Now every 1 meter will give you 1,000 millimeters. So the 1 meter will be equal to 1,000 millimeters, or equivalent to 1,000 millimeters. So when you get your height, you write it here. Your height is 1,000 meters. And as I said, if you want to change it to centimeter cube, divide by 1,000. So that will be 154 centimeter cube. 7 reduces 7. 7 times this is 154 times 1,000. 154,000. Changing this to centimeter cube, divide by 1,000 to give you 154 centimeter cube. The next one says the curved surface area. That is given by 2 pi r h. Now, 2 times 22 over 7. Our radius is still 7. We are not using the big one, the small one. Small r is the same. Height is 1,000. Now, Solving this, hmm? 7 reduces 7. 2 times 22 is 44. 44 times 1000 is going to give you. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I'm still looking at this one. Sorry. I'm going to find the cross sectional area. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, Dennis. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> the brain moves faster. Sorry. Sorry. So you are looking at the second one. Very sorry. The cross sectional area of the pipe. Cross sectional area. Cross sectional. Cross sectional area. Cross sectional area. How do you find the cross sectional area of the pipe? It is area of the big circle minus area of the smaller circle. Right. And that's okay, so let's go. So 22 over 7. The big radius R is 9. So 9 squared minus 22 over 7 times small r 7 centimeters. Solving everything. That's what it's going to give you. Okay, now let's continue. I, I, I. The area of the exterior curve surface area. What is this question trying to say? Area of the exterior curve surface area. This question is trying to ask Dennis of Sir Henry's class YouTube channel that what is the curved surface area of the outer part of the pipe, not the inner, the outer. So he said what? Exterior. Exterior. The curve. And that portion is also curved. The outside. The exterior is curved. So they're asking you curved surface area of the 
outer one. So we're going to use the outer radius, not the inner radius. So that would be 2, 2 pi capital I H, because it said was exterior. And the question should have seen interior with R, but exterior outside capital R. So we have 2 times base 2 over 7. Big R is given by 9. Height is given by 1000. So we have 44 over 7 times 9428. So you can round the nearest whole number that will be 5, 6, 5, 7. Now the last aspect of this says we should find the last aspect says we should find the so we claim that one. Oh, the last part of this says we should find the volume of the copper used in making the pipe. The volume of the copper used in making the pipe. So volume of material used. Can you collect the formula? Volume of material used. So volume of copper used. Mm -hmm. Can you collect? Pi capital R squared minus pi small r squared. All multiplied. So 22 over 7 times 9 squared. That is 81. Right, that's 81. I think we have that there. Minus 22 over 7 times 49 to 7. Multiplying by our 1000. Good. So this solving everything. Q. Good. So this is what we have. We are done with example 1 and 2. We'll take the final. So not the least. The last but not least, final example, and then I would, I would give you something to try as assignment. When you're done with the answer, you post or you type the answer right in the comment section box, and Sammy would, would address it. Good. So, the last thing, and I'll bring our lesson to an end. The last example, I believe you are following. Good, good, good. Let us consider the last example. A cylindrical, sorry, a cylinder closed at one end has radius 7 cm and height 20 cm. We find I its total surface area. I, if the cylinder is filled with water to a depth of 5 cm, calculate the volume of water in it. So let's get going. I, the total surface area of a cylinder with one end closed, meaning one end is what open. So only one circle will be there, and the curved surface. I believe now you you, you get a choice. Okay. Right then. So. Pi r squared plus two pi h. So that will be twenty two by seven. Our radius is seven squared. Seven squared plus two times twenty two by seven times seven. And our height is twenty. So solving this will give you one hundred and fifty four. Solving this will also give you eight hundred and eighty. And that will give you 1034 cm squared. 1034 cm squared. If the cylinder is filled with water to a depth of 5 cm, so let's assume this is the cylinder, one end close, one end open, one end open, sorry, one end close. So I fill water, and water reaches a height of 5 centimeters or a depth. So it simply means 
high and dead the same. But here, you are talking of the depth of the water, not the height of the cylinder. When you pour the water, it got to a height of... So you can't use 20 here. No. The depth of the water. We are talking of the volume of the water, not volume of the cylinder. Good. So we are going to the depth of the water to find the volume. Not the volume of the cylinder, but the depth. Exactly. Yes. The depth of it. So, that will be pi r squared h. So 22 over 7. The radius is 7 squared and your height is 5 and not 20. So, this will give you 154 times 5 and this will give you 770 centimeters cubed. 770 centimeters cubed. Good. So this is what we have as our last and final example. I believe you enjoyed the lesson today and this brings us to an end of today's lesson. I would urge you to subscribe to our channel. Whenever you post new videos, you will be the first to have access to watch them. You get a notification and then you tap on it and then you are good to go. So I'm going to give you something to try as assignment. Something to try as assignment and that will be shown on the screen. So you write it down and then you try your hands on it. And it reads, a cylinder which has a height of 90 centimeters and diameter 14 centimeters is closed at both ends. Find I, a total surface area and II, volume of the cylinder, take pi to be equal to 22 over 7. Ah, if you are able to answer your question correctly, your total surface area will be 4,268 centimeters squared. And your volume I add will be 13,860 centimeter cube. So that's what is showing on your screen. Write them, answer them, put the answer right in the comment section box. Thank you for having me.